I'm Kristen Moran with the Investing News Network. Here with me today at Canvest is Jordan Trimble, President and CEO of Sky Harbor Resources. Jordan, thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. Great. Uh, Sky Harbor began the first work program at its Falcon Point Uranium and Thorium project uh, this past March. Can you tell us what you've achieved there so far and what's the main goal of the project? Yeah, so this is a project that we acquired from Dennis in about a year ago. Uh, it was actually uh, at the time uh, this conference was being put on a year ago. Uh, we acquired it in a, uh, well, still remains a very depressed uranium market. So we got it at an attractive valuation. The project's seen a lot of historical work, uh, almost uh, $13 million in historical exploration, drilling, prospecting, geophysics, etc. Uh, so we took it on and uh, we carried out our first program uh, this uh, last uh, basically February through April. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just waiting for uh, assays from this drill program. It was a small first pass drill program for us, focusing in on a uh, deposit that we have at the project, NI43101 compliant inferred uranium deposit. So we drilled a little bit deeper uh, below the current uh, resource area. Um, and there, it's quite shallow. It only goes down to about 150 meters. That was the deepest drilling that was done historically. So we've tested it a little bit deeper down to 200, 250 meters. Okay. Um, and what are the next steps at Falcon Point? Yeah, so once we get the assays back, we'll go through that and that will determine uh, what we'd like to do here going forward. Uh, visually, we were very happy with what we were seeing in the core. Uh, we saw some radioactivity um, and uh, that's that's very encouraging, all the right kind of alteration. Uh, geologically, uh, the, uh, the project and, and in particular the deposit area, it's similar uh, to what you see at, uh, at Eagle Point, which is a, uh, a, a producing mine uh, that Cameco's had in operation for many decades now it's basement hosted uh, and there's a potential at Falcon Point at the uh, current deposit for higher grade mineralization which is what we're uh, what we're looking for um, so once we get the assays back uh, that'll determine what we do here in the summer uh, one uh, one opportunity we have is to go back into another target area on that project uh, that has historical grab samples that returned up to 48 percent u 308 so very very high grade uranium mineralization at surface in a vein uh, we couldn't get in there uh, in the winter it was tougher to get in so uh, once the snows melted as it has we can go back in there and do a little bit of exploration there in addition to the work we've already done at the deposit area on the project oh that's exciting um, when are the assay results expected um, they should be coming back in the next few weeks here so quite shortly. oh good yeah. um, so thorium has attracted interest from investors in the past but there's also some skepticism about it uh, why do you find thorium a compelling metal yeah it's it's, um, in addition to the uranium uh, deposit resource that we have, there's a thorium credit uh, as well. Um, and uh, you can find both thorium and uranium together uh, in nature, um, both of them being radioactive elements. Um, thorium, uh, a little obviously less known than, uh, than uranium. Uh, it's interesting, it's being talked about as uh, being used as a substitute down the road for uranium uh, as a nuclear fuel. And the interesting thing about it is that uh, it's uh, much less hazardous. Uh, the waste products are much less hazardous than uh, when you use uranium for nuclear fuel. It has a much higher melting point as well, so the, the chances of a meltdown are, are much lower. Uh, it's also much more abundant uh, than uranium uh, in nature, but there's not many deposits in places like the Athabasca Basin, uh, NI43101 deposits. Um, a lot of these uh, thorium deposits, they're either uh, tied in with rare earths or, or, or other minerals, and they're in places like India uh, and other parts of the world. Um, call it less favorable mining jurisdictions. Um, so it's it's an interesting dynamic that we have uh, as a uh, as a small cap uh, mining company uh, exploration company uh, that that most others don't. Um, again, you know we are a uranium focused company, but uh, this thorium uh, aspect is uh, is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, Sky Harbor owns the Preston Uranium Project as part of the Western Athabasca Syndicate. Can you tell us about the company's working relationship with uh, Athabasca Nuclear, NOCA Resources, and Lucky Strike Resources? Yeah, so just a quick background uh, on this project. This has generated a lot of news flow for us over the last couple of years. Um, we structured a deal uh, a couple of years back with uh, our three partner companies, as you mentioned, uh, whereby uh, two of the companies brought in large land packages. Uh, this land is uh, in the vicinity of the recent discoveries made by Fission at Patterson Lake South and NextGen at, at Arrow and uh, the Bow. Uh, and uh, it's really an emerging district. Uh, uranium
uranium, high-grade uranium district um, that has uh, seen a lot of money raised and spent in the ground, a lot of exploration success, and a lot of wealth creation for investors. Uh, so we uh, put together a very large land package, um, and what we did is partnered up with these other three companies and formed a syndicate whereby they would uh, fund the bulk of the exploration. Uh, we're the operator uh, right now, so it means we plan the programs. We also collect the 10% operator uh, fee as well. But really, the idea is to bring in uh, multiple groups uh, with their own geological technical teams, so you have synergies there, uh, and also to mitigate the risk uh, across a number of companies versus mm -hmm. one company trying to raise five or six million dollars in this market, which is you know near impossible right now. Uh, we've been able to raise well over four uh, with our partners and spend that uh, in all of the necessary work you need to get these targets on that uh, property. It's called the Preston. That's the that's the main project in the syndicate um, up to a drill ready stage, and we actually did uh, drill uh, our first few targets there uh, last uh, May, uh, last April and May, uh, and we're planning a, uh, another large drill program here this summer. Oh, really? That's exciting. Um, so that leads me to my next question, actually. The company saw some promising revol uh, results from its Winterfield program at Preston. Uh, what are the next steps there, and uh, what are the upcoming results investors should be watching for? Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are planning a summer drill program. Um, the lion's share of that will be paid for by the syndicate partners, um, and uh, we're, uh, we're just in the middle of planning that. There's, as I mentioned, an, a handful of targets that we'd like to go uh, and, and drill a few holes on. Um, we're just prioritizing them right now. It's a big project, right? It's one of the mm -hmm. biggest uh, property packages in this uh, in this emerging area. Um, and um, a big part of that is you have to spend the money to keep the claims in good standing. A lot of companies that went in there acquired ground. A lot of these claims will be lapsing. Well, we've been able to, with our partner companies, raise the necessary capital and keep a, a good chunk of that in, in good standing going forward. Uh, so we'll ha continue to have exposure to this area for a while. Uh, but this drill program, um, we'll, uh, we have uh, uh, 1.8 million earmarked for it. So it's a $6 million spend over a two year period. That was the deal with the syndicate. We're already 4.2 million into that. So the remaining 1.8 will be spent this summer in drilling. Okay. Um, good. Uh, and finally, at the VRIC conference in January, you said that you thought uranium was due for a good year. Uh, we're almost halfway through the year now. What are your thoughts on the first half and uh, how do you feel about the price moving forward? Well, it's it's been a volatile year, both up and down. Um, <laughs> actually, last summer, uh, uranium hit a low of $28 a pound, which is, uh, I believe, the lowest price inflation adjustment adjusted terms um, in a long, long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's rebounded since then. We're trading around $35, $36 a pound. It poked up uh, well above $40. Um, so you have a, a combination of factors, both good and bad, that are that are moving it around right now. Um, but going forward, needless to say, we're quite bullish. You know, I think, as I said, at the uh, January conference, it's not necessarily going to happen tomorrow. But um, over the next few years, I, I think there's a fundamentally quite a bullish case for uranium. You have the restarts happening in Japan here shortly. Uh, but the biggest thing is if you look at the primary mine supply out there and the cost of producing uranium globally on average, it's much, much higher than where the spot price is right now. And uh, that something has to change. Something's got to give there. Uh, so I do see uh, I do see the spot price moving up uh, quite significantly over the next few years. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Jordan, for joining me. I'm Kristen with Investing News Network.